What's going on guys? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to the Beastly Gamer channel. I want to talk to you guys today a little bit about this week that just happened. E3 week has come and went and um, a lot of us are really excited about the stuff that we saw. I was really excited about Microsoft. I was surprisingly excited about Nintendo. I think Sony did a really good job. So I think for everybody out there who's a gamer, E3 showed some really promising stuff that we all should be smiling about. I want to talk to you guys today a little bit about the Microsoft E3 conference and give you my thoughts on it and I also wanted to hear your thoughts on it because uh, they came out guns a blazing, they came out swinging they did non-stop gaming for 90 minutes Phil Spencer was very very personable and I, I really appreciate that someone talking to the audience that feels relatable he didn't feel like a robot he felt like somebody who cared about games and he talked about it passionately and uh, it came across really well for me they also announced the uh, the price drop for the Xbox One at three ninety nine with no connect so that's been available since E three as well a lot of good stuff came out of E three Microsoft conference I want to go through some of my favorite moments at E three twenty fourteen coming from Microsoft the first game that I saw at the conference that really caught my eye because it looked so good and I didn't know what it was believe it or not was Fable Legends Fable Legends looks really good fantasy setting and when you think about Fable now you think of what could have been in the initial series because we were promised as gamers that with Fable you would have infinite possibilities of control in the world and it ended up being well basically falling short of that premise and we kinda got used to it and as the Fable games continued to roll out they gradually declined and to the point of the last Fable game which really no one liked but Fable Legends looks to potentially change that the game doesn't look uh, to focus on every aspect of the world that you can change it seems to focus more on the teamwork dynamic three players playing the game together it looks beautiful I don't know how the story is going to play out I don't know exactly how deep and intricate the world will be but the fact that they know how the, the, the series has declined over the last few years I'm sure they've worked on a lot of things to bring the initial or the original Fable fans back to the franchise and I'm really excited about the game I'm looking forward to more information on it it looks like it's going to be a big big deal for the Xbox One in the near future. So I would definitely be looking out for that game. Like I said, the game looked really good to me and I'm kind of excited about it. Another game that looked great from the Microsoft conference was Sunset Overdrive. It's uh, made by Insomniac Games, the guys who brought Resistance to the World and other PlayStation classics. Now, Insomniac has had issues with Sony uh, where they would make a fantastic franchise like Spyro the Dragon and they would lose the rights to their character. Now you see how Spyro is doing well now with the toys and the games. It's like a huge selling thing. And Insomniac has no ties to it. They don't make any money off of it. And so Microsoft kind of did them a solid. They wanted to actually own their own IP. They wanted to own their title and basically have their own stuff that no one could steal or take from them like Sony did their previous games. And uh, so that was what Microsoft gave them. And uh, the game that they gave them was Sunset Overdrive. They developed the game from the ground up for the Xbox One and they actually own it. So the game looks really fun. I gotta say it does. It kind of reminds me of Jet Set Radio maybe you know with with mutants in the world. Uh, it looks really fun and fast and when you see games that are colorful like this and you're running around shooting enemies it just makes you feel good. It makes you feel excited. It looks like a really fast paced game and uh, I'm excited about what Sunset Overdrive will bring to the Xbox One because God knows we need games for all these next-gen consoles. So yes, yeah, Sunset Overdrive, I thought it looked really good. I thought that the uh, gameplay they showed looked great. And I'm excited to see what they bring from this game. Insomniac is a hell of a studio. And I'm really excited to see whatever they're able to do with the Xbox One and this new franchise. Another game that was big for the Xbox One, not quite as big for me, uh, is Forza Horizon 2. Now Forza Horizon is different than the, you know the previous game Forza 5 uh, in, in the sense that you can actually go off-road and it's more of an open world environment. The game does look really good. I gotta say that you know these racing sims for some reason they always seem to be almost photorealistic because you don't have to put too much into it other than the the modeling of the cars and the environment. Not too much more going on. I'm just not that big into racing games. I mean, I'll play them, but I won't be, you know, pre-ordering any racing games. It's just not my style. More into kart racers. One of the games that Microsoft showed that really blew my mind and made me—it took me back to to films. 
It took me back to stuff like uh, Studio Ghibli Spirited Away was Ori and the Blind Forest. This game looks phenomenal. It looks very story driven and atmospheric. The, the main character, I don't know what it is, but it looks like something from Spirited Away. And there's this evil dark owl that you have to escape. You have to basically get out of the forest. That's the uh, theme of this game. And there's this dark owl that follows you throughout the game. Its name is Kuro, and it looks very creepy. And man, when I saw this, I was like, wow, this is definitely something that's going to bring people from other consoles to the Xbox One. I like the originality behind it. The entire world is hand-drawn. It looks seamless and very beautiful. It's like a world you would want to spend a lot of time in. And I'm really excited about it. It looks great. Or in the Blind Forest, coming to the Xbox One, that's definitely a must-have game. Just from the looks of it, it looks phenomenal. I love games like this. I love Rayman. You know, uh, and this game looks to, to be top-notch. It looks to, to be at least as good as Rayman graphically. And uh, f from what they're touting, this game is very story-driven. And I, I can't wait to see what it's all about. Ori in the Blind Forest, coming to the Xbox One soon. You guys keep your eyes open for that one for sure. Like most of you guys, I was really excited to find out about Halo Guardians, the next Halo for the Xbox One. Unfortunately, like I thought, we wouldn't get too much from Microsoft on this new game. It's very early in the development cycle, so we didn't really see anything on it. But Microsoft did not leave Halo fans hanging. They got Halo, the Master Chief Collection, coming to the Xbox One. And uh, what this is, is Halo 1, Halo 2, Halo 3, and Halo 4 all on one disc for the Xbox One. Now the good thing about this, the amazing thing is, because I didn't think they'd be able to do all that on one, is that Halo 2 has been completely redone from the ground up for the Xbox One. You've got five multiplayer maps for the Xbox One version of Halo 2 that have been completely redone. you got over 100 multiplayer maps for online play. The local co-op still exists, so if you want to do couch co-op or couch versus mode, all that exists on one disc and it's only $60. That is huge news. When I saw that, that was the moment I looked at my wife and she looked at me and I was like, okay, then it's done. There's no more talking shit. There's no more, you know, smashing the Xbox One. This is something that we absolutely have to have. To be able to play online, you know, in Halo 1, something that no one's ever been able to do. To be able to play, you know, all these servers that have been shut down for years. To go back to a game that we all loved and grew up with and play each other and updated, you know, 1080p 60 frames per second gameplay is a phenomenal feat. And I'm super excited to see whatever they're going to bring, uh, you know, this year and in 2015 as far as Halo comes. But that is amazing. I thought my mind was blown the moment I saw it. You guys let me know what you think about Halo. I would have to give Microsoft's E3 conference a solid 9. They came out swinging. It was nothing but games. You know, Phil Spencer was very likable. He came across as a really good guy. And I, I, I loved the, the whole conference. I thought it was a great thing. You guys let me know what you thought about the Microsoft E3 Conference 2014. And get back with me in the comment section below. I'm the Beastly Gamer. And I'll see you guys next time. What are you doing here in the middle of the night? Not back to your old tricks and thievery. <laughs> oh, there's a perfectly good explanation for this. Tell me, where are we going? We don't really know yet. Something strange is going on. A new venture. Shall we go then? <laughs>